Hey everyone, Walton E.K. Thano here, internet's busiest Kickstarter nerd, and it's time for another Kickstarter crap deep dive as promised. Last time I told you there was someone else whose story ought to be told, and I meant it, as today we'll be looking at Sean Andre. What's that? You don't know who Sean Andre is? I don't know what blood-sucking blood foolery sorry. you've been up to, but clearly you must have been doing it under a rock. Because Sean Andre is one of the modern rap scene's most ambitious young artists, and I'm only being slightly sarcastic here. You see, it's possible you know him by another name. For many years, after all, Sean went by the name Caffeine. Uh, wait, hold on, you still don't recognize that name, do you? Let me just... Uh, there. That's the moniker that the IDUPS community has known him by, but not one he's stuck to since. But I'm getting ahead of myself with all of this. For a start, let's go back in time. 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 To the year 2014. On November 16th, a Kickstarter project was made by user CKF. Quaff. Quaff. Try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Huh? Fiend and was titled Self-Made Entrepreneurs LLC, Lifestyle, Branding, Music. Although the project, like many in this series, featured grammatical errors and clunky, unusual sentence structures, it was fairly thorough, with a lengthy description, video content, links to other content, and several different reward tiers. I'm sure some of you are already curious about how exactly this project had managed to get negative backers and dollars pledged, as Ian made fun of in his video expired a couple of days ago we was actually making fun of it with friends of mine like how do you get i got negative two backers or negative two f funds raised i don't even know how that's possible but <laughs> somehow i the answer is extremely not entertaining the dates line up where you can tell kickstarter probably glitched out and just displayed the wrong number um i i allow you to imagine a more interesting answer yourself such as the money being stolen by a pirate for the sake of brevity, I won't be covering the IDUPS Quaffine exchange in this video, but you can find links to both in the description below for further context. Starting with those reward tiers, the first of Sean's mistakes becomes apparent, believing that people would innately give a shit and dreaming way too big. The tiers reaching into thousands of dollars just to meet with Sean himself and ask any questions the backers would like, question mark, leave a sour taste of self-importance in the mouth. As far as the musical scene and social media went, Sean was a nobody, acting as though he had already made it big. You see, as lambasted plenty in the video made by iDubs, Sean linked four accounts on his Kickstarter profile, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Hulkshare. Of these, only his YouTube and Hulkshare accounts being completely preserved to this day. Back in 2015, when the project had been launched and Idubs had made his Kickstarter crap on it, Sean's numbers on these platforms weren't amazing. Strangely, the only Wayback Machine log of his Instagram profile actually shows him with thousands of followers compared to only about 200 on his privated account today. His old Facebook page is similarly gone now, but the new self-made entrepreneurs page sits at about 300 followers, while his own personal artist page has about 800. If you don't know what Hulkshare is, neither do I. But he did put his music on there and get what seems to be okay attention? With plays ranging from a few hundred to a little over a thousand. Though likes and downloads seem to be rather pitiful back then too. Curiously, Hulkshare is the only platform which has been consistently saved again and again on Wayback Machine, making me wonder if this is something done either by Sean himself or the site itself. Either way, there wouldn't be much change there anyhow, and this account didn't receive any attention after 2015. The real point of interest would naturally become his YouTube channels, although notably they would never garner as much attention as the likes of Gatorpoon and Lusik. The videos themselves would get views, brought about by the Eye of Dubs, but people would simply not stick around to subscribe, perhaps because he would upload less frequently, and much of what he'd put out had been removed. In actuality, two channels exist. The first, made all the way in 2010, currently goes by the name Sean Andre, and is the one linked directly on his Kickstarter page, and is by far the more active channel, with uploads reaching even into 2022 suggesting that Sean is still around and making more content in the future. Or perhaps not. 
We'll see about that in a moment. The second channel, the one under the name Sequafine, is more obscure with only 4 uploads to it, though one of them shows the kinds of gigs Sean would attend 9 years ago. Indeed, gigs like these would be his starting point, and a part of his career which would remain largely unseen to those of us who would stumble onto his content online, iDubs included. As indicated by his introduction to this video, by this point Sean had already started the SME Lifestyle brand. So self-made entrepreneurs, as my partners, my team has been introducing to you all night, we are from the bottom up. Uh, we a movement, we for the people, upside down pyramids. We are from the bottom, we gonna bring the bottom on top. When we on top, the bottom will be, look, be looked up to by the top. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all yeah. get that? Yeah. Upside down pyramids, self-made, that's the clothing line, 718 smecom baby. Yeah. Okay. That's what we gonna throw up, alright? We can confirm this with Sean's LinkedIn page, stating that he'd founded Self-Made Entrepreneurs in 2008. According to this page, along with tidbits on Instagram profiles, tweets, Facebook posts and videos, it wasn't doing as terribly as you maybe might expect, with Sean managing several of his friends' careers and conducting small charity events and parties, and DJing at clubs. His LinkedIn profile also shows that, while he might hate regular 9-to-5 work, unlike certain other characters I've covered, he wasn't totally averse to it. His profile lists him as having been a Starbucks shift supervisor, a special officer at a homeless shelter, and lists him as currently employed as an inspector by the New York City transit system. So, when Sean told iDubs that he did, in fact, have a real job that paid the bills way back when, at least he was honest about that. I have a real life. When I say I have a real life, I don't have my mom paying my bills, I don't stay with my mom. I have a family that I have to take care of, I have my own responsibilities I have to take care of, in which I don't have the time to sit in a room and do research all day and be on videos. Other than that, most things about Sean's life can only be assumed, including the name of his pet goldfish. But inside is brought, thankfully, by the man himself. Or it was. Another defunct site, www.whoisshawnandre.com, has luckily been saved on Wayback Machine as well providing us with what Sean has deemed his biography. Although it's not as informative as you might like, it's better than nothing. It reads in part, quote, An entrepreneur, hip-hop recording artist, model, actor, and CEO of SME Lifestyle Inc., born and raised in the streets of Brooklyn, New York, and tapping in all aspects of the entertainment industry while promoting entrepreneurship as the way of life. Sean Andre started out freestyling in high school during class as a way to kill time and get some laughs. With his lack of interest in what was taught in the classroom, you could presume that Sean Andre and school did not get along very well. But that was then. Now, he has grown to understand that knowledge is power and both men and women must seek knowledge in order to be powerful and control their destiny. Needless to say, freestyling became a form of self-expression for Sean Andre. After realizing how serious his passion for the music what? After realizing how serious his passion for the music was, Sean Andre invested in a Samsung condenser mic and an HP laptop to start creating. He never wrote any of his music. I just hit record and started spitting. I wanted to get in the game as a freestyling or a non-writing artist like Jay-Z or Lil Wayne. But I grew to realize that they did in fact write some of their material, so I practiced day and night to achieve the same. After graduating from high school, proving those who said he that he wouldn't wrong, he decided to get a tattoo on his right arm with the word self-made. This defined who Sean Andre was, and it inspired him to want to start his own movement slash brand slash clothing line slash record label slash way of life called Self-Made Entrepreneurs. Building his own company was mapped out from his own life and experiences. Do what makes you happy, do it for yourself and no one else. Whatever you pursue, there will always be someone to find something wrong with it, no matter how good you are. It's your life, so live it to your satisfaction. Be yourself, put God first, and before you leave this world, make it a little better than you found it. From the bottom up, ah yay. We have the project, we have the background, so what about his music? 
We ought to start where things were way back then. And I know just the place to begin. To the comment sections! Ugh. What does this place smell like that? The comments were naturally full of mockery from the get-go, but a small portion of them provide actual critique and level of recognition. Like with Lucic's grime stepping, people would in fact recognize a level of technical skill in what Sean did, just noted a lack of direction. His flows were good, he had good rhythm, it's just that his lyrics were ASS. But with that inkling of talent already there, it would be only a matter of time before he would create something worthwhile, right? Let's jump back into the Sean Andre channel. We have 10 whole years of his career to gauge his abilities and how they progressed. As said in his biography, Sean started out doing nothing but freestyles, and as pointed out plenty in the comments, whenever they hadn't been disabled, they weren't particularly impressive, resorting to ad-libs before the start of the song, and frequently having interjections of oohs, yes, and n-words in the lines. DMG, what up? Steph L, Space, what up? K-Ray, Prop, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you and I, we are in the same The way that I rip it, I'm fracturing brains I stayed in my lane and I grip that green for a middle finger up his fuck you lane. These oh, niggas yeah. keep cutting me like these niggas... Uh, again, Sean was good at maintaining a good flow, but not so good at actually saying anything worthwhile in it. During 2014 and beyond, he seemed to explore different styles in his music, with more vocal singing tracks like Two On, and more lyrical ones like Pound Cake. Caught your attention to make sense of what will work for life But pay me no mind, my ego was always like the elephant in the room Have the women curious to see if it's big as they say it is Haters feel the cliche, who do he think he is? But as again was pointed out in the comments, these didn't quite work Sean doesn't have much of a sing-song voice And Pound Cake, while having another decent flow Goes out of bounds in Sean's rapping compared to the background beat Something was still missing, and as the item situation came and went it was unclear whether or not he'd ever find it. As a quick side note, the original video response to iDubs was removed, but Sean had re-uploaded it in 2017, and the video is available on the channel to this day. The description to that video reads, As requested by the masses, the full response to iDubs Kickstarter crap, recorded in 2015 when I thought jump cuts were cool. Looking back, not too proud of this response, but hey look at all the hate and it was on those turning points that influenced IWBs to start Content Cop. Allegedly. Look Alive, another freestyle, is actually pretty fun. Has a neat little skit throughout it about a shootout with broomsticks, turned into a karate fight in a Five Guys, fairly entertaining stuff. There were a few more freestyles, a fairly decent track in Hunted or Beto and Trap God, but it was December 2020 that his real breakout track dropped. The Generates, featuring Jojo Simmons. That's right, THE Jojo Simmons. Who I had to Google, but he's at least not a complete nobody. In fact, from middle of 2020 into 2021, Sean really popped off. I mean, just look at these stats on Social Blade. Now I know what you're thinking, don't those bumps look kinda sus? And the answer to that is, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they really kinda fucking do. Uh, I'm pretty sure he bought some views and subs, it at least looks like that's what happened just looking at this. And yet, I can't actually blame him. You see, if we look at the videos he's posted since the iDubs interaction, if you follow along his social media posts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Despite not getting the numbers, he's clearly been living a decent life. What it is that make you tick. Once you understand yourself, you can't be swayed by what's going on in the world. You can't be told negative. Anybody, they could throw energy at you. They could throw whatever they want at you. At the end of the day, it's going to fall right off your shoulder because I, you know that man in the mirror. Nobody can take you off your course because you know who you are. For this whole rap and branding thing being a side hustle with him having an actual day job, he's been doing 
pretty well for himself, DJing at local events and networking. So where's the problem? Why even resort to viewbotting or buying subs or, or fake comments as he's been accused of? You see, I believe that in a lot of cases, if you look at the story of someone with a troubled life, in one way or another, you'll find a villain. Certainly this would be true of the gang I've covered so far in my videos. In the case of Lusik, that villain would be Lusik himself, both as the villain in his own story and the story of the late Bobby. In Ryan's case, he too was his own villain, though unwitting, never expecting to have so much pressure placed upon himself. Sad as it might be to say, in the case of Pisces, it was Ian who wound up as the villain, having to do damage control himself at the end of his response video, claiming Pisces has been a good friend all along. For Gator, that villain was briefly Poon. So who is the villain in Sean's story? Who is it that turned his life story from what a potential success to that of abject failure? Allow me to show their face to you now! This bit would work uh, better if mirrors uh, actually function like that on, uh, on digital screens. The, the, the point is it's you. You're the villain. Before you get all your panties twisted, this is a royal you. I'm not talking about specifically you, the viewer, watching this right now, though you may be part of the fucking problem. I'm talking about the royal you of the iDubbbz fanbase. Because, you see, this video could have been a whole lot longer and a whole lot more in-depth. Because more than with any of the other projects I have covered, there was one thing I really wanted to fucking do. I wanted to talk to Sean. I wanted to know exactly how all of this shit went down because that biography gave us fucking nothing. I have very few posts to go off of on how his career has been going. So, to, to talk to him would have been a great opportunity. But guess what? I fucking couldn't. Why? Because there is no way to contact him on YouTube. There is no way to contact him by email because I'm guessing that all of the fucking messages I sent him were either ignored or filtered because they included words like iDubs, Kickstarter, interview, fucking anything. I, I couldn't get him on Twitter because, huh, well, for one, his Twitter account is barely fucking active anymore, but also he's disabled direct messages. I, I, I didn't want to spoil, just in case. I didn't want to spoil that this video would be about uh, Quaffeen. So, I made a second account, I tried to uh, uh, message him on that account with a, with, a, with a direct fucking tweet instead of a DM, no response. I tried to get to him on Facebook, no way to contact him there. I tried to fucking contact him on LinkedIn and got no response. I messaged him on Instagram uh, on, because, again, couldn't get to his main account, so I messaged his uh, uh, extra account, which is like the SME lifestyle branding account. No way to contact him there either. He's completely fucking unreachable. And you know why he's completely unreachable? It's because on every single one of those platforms, except LinkedIn, because it's LinkedIn, if you go into the fucking comments, you know what you'll find? People, seven years later, telling him to eat a goddamn sandwich. The most unfunny motherfuckers on the planet, repeating the same jokes year after year, video after fucking video. Constantly! It's a barrage! I don't understand, you guys have nothing better to do! This guy, yes, he made a shitty Kickstarter project. He made it years ago, he made a shitty response. Hell, he's owned up to that response. Gator owned up to that response. You know, Lusik fucking sucked. Ryan didn't give a shit. Of course, in the case of Gator, he didn't just own up to it. He said, yeah, you're right, and here's how I'm going to try and improve myself. But of course, as I mentioned in the Gator video, there are still motherfuckers who go to his channel now to repeat the same shitty, stupid, oh, 100% improv jokes. Because they don't give a shit. They'll click on the latest video and post that garbage without checking the rest of the fucking content on the channel. 
The same shit is happening with every single thing Sean posts. It needs to fucking stop. This poor dude gets 14 listeners every month on Spotify, and I, I'm at like 10 of those. One of the reasons I even started this goddamn series is that I found his channel, right? And I listened to Degenerates. And it was fucking good. It's a good song. It, it's impressive that this came out of the same fucking person. This, the video is dope. He's living a great life right now. But some salty goddamn motherfuckers who are living seven years in the past still take the time out of their day to go into these comment sections and post this shit. This is the reason why Dayron blocked me on Twitter. And this is the point at which I would like to close off this season. I wasn't sure how I should go about it, how I should go about switching into a different kind of content for a little bit. But what I settled on are two things. One is a promise. When this series returns for a season two, you're getting Dayron. Dayron is going to be the first priority. The second thing I would like to do is make a request to everyone watching this video, to everyone who has watched this whole series. What I want you to do is do a couple of things. One, genuinely, actually go to Gator's channel and see it for yourself. Don't just take my word for how that content has changed, improved, or not improved. Two, go on YouTube or go on Spotify and listen to at least one track from Sean, the great Quaffine himself. As the very final note, I will now use this video as a last opportunity to get Sean's attention. If he's not going to respond to messages and emails and tweets, Perhaps he will respond to a potential copyright strike. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Andre featuring Jojo Simmons, Degenerates. Leave it to my president, he'll tell you we're degenerates. Niggas that wasn't supposed to mount the shit. Oh, you're so generous. Oh, you're so generous. Leave it to my president, he tell you we're degenerates. Niggas that wasn't supposed to mount a shit. Look, you're living in poverty. Your it's school's no good. good. You have no jobs. Yeah. Go flipping up in that mode. Tell me really what's the motive. From the bottom where I grown. Yeah, nigga on some cold shit. Mama low what I done. Turn nothing into something. Remember young Wayne used to find the work though without that garbage. Now that same work is the work that pay the bills. Yeah. House up on the hills. Tell me don't you love the feeling. Yeah. Haters perpetrate, but can I eat up on my plate? Yeah. Got a hundred thousand bands from such a way. Yeah. Who the fuck is stop the dream? We got that shit on lock. Yeah, she gon' pop that ass up on the stand just like I like it. Yeah. Oh. Got a pole right up in my gut and home. Uh -huh. She gets down to touch the road. Okay. Tell me yet, yeah, what's your goal? Right. To be free. Mommy off the sauce is fucking dripping. Throw it back. Got a nigga wildin' in his bitch. Man, I'm high up in his bitch. Switching lanes up in his bitch. I've been drinking, I've been driving. How'd I make it to my crib? Cause all my shots go swish. 58% of your youth is unemployed.